delinquencies are up. Did y'all know that loans on cars, loans on cars, allegedly, allegedly, and I am just going based off of the reports that's being submitted to me, loans on cars are had a higher delinquency than they were during the recession. Loans on cars are at a higher delinquency than they were during the recession. Let's deep dive into it a little bit. Let me see if I can get this up for y'all. Give me a second. Give me a second. I want to move over into a specific part of housing, it. Housing, the current rate on a fixed 30-year mortgage sitting at 7.3%. Two years ago, that number was... 3.03 percent to talk about what those rate rises mean let's bring in ted rossman senior industry analyst at bank rate ted welcome good to have you with us so now i'm going to tie in the real estate market with what it is that we see with regard to debt and then delinquencies in the automotive market that jumped from three percent to above seven percent what does it do uh, to purchasing power for a home buyer how much does it cut it it cuts your purchasing power by about 40%. So in other wow. words, if you could afford a $375,000 house at 3%, now with rates over seven, you're probably looking at something like a $225,000 house. And there aren't that many of those. That's another key point is that low inventory plus high rates, we're talking high prices, high rates. It's a tough situation. So it's a tough situation. So I, I guess if I were in the market to buy, what I would be doing if I were faced with that dilemma would be looking at adjustable rate mortgages where I can at least buy some time at a lower rate and maybe get into that $375,000 house, even though I would not have the certainty of a 30-year fix. Is that what hap what's happening? Some people are talking about dating the rate and marrying the house, as in you're betting on refinancing down the road. I still think, though, that the 30-year fixed is the best gauge of affordability. I mean, it may not always be the best product for everybody, but it's just a slippery slope. You know, if you're betting mm -hmm. on refinancing and what if that doesn't work out for one reason or another? Rates don't move as expected or you lose your job or you have to move and sell the house. I, I think there's some risk here. Another thing we're seeing is that home builders and sellers are sometimes offering incentives like rate buy downs, for example, to cushion the blow for buyers. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, Ted, we've been focusing on the impact to the housing market. The auto market is a little bit different, but it's still massive. I think the second biggest in terms of outstanding debt, and we're seeing many more cracks there already than we are on the housing side of it. What's going on with autos? Subprime auto delinquencies are actually worse now than they were during the Great Recession. And I think Subprime auto delinquencies, meaning there are less people that actually qualify from a credit perspective that we're getting approved, which is one of the signs of whether or not you're actually either A, going into a recession or the health of the United States of America as far as our financial markets. On Sunday, what I like to do, and one of the reasons why, uh, it, really I had a, a couple of different reasons why I was at the dealership. On Sunday, I was at the dealership, right? And the dealerships aren't open on Sunday, but some of you, some of you see me drop a video uh, on the Anton Daniels channel on Sunday evening that basically highlighted, and I was speaking to a specific subject that was unrelated to cars, but I highlighted what it was that I was looking to buy some, right? And so one of the things that I was actually looking to buy was a Sprinter van or an E-Transit, right? A Transit van. Transit van is from Ford. Or a Sprinter van is over there from basically Mercedes, okay? I like the Transit van. I think that it's, it, it, they gave some great updates to it. I also like the electric version. I'm probably not going to get the electric version. Probably get the gas version because I don't think that it has enough uh, mileage on it, the electric version. They need to increase the mileage on it. But I was talking about it, right? But one of the things I was able to observe and that I was able to see is... I was able to look at all of the different cars that were sitting on the auto lots. All of the different cars that were sitting on the auto lots. 
I seen rows and rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of the top selling vehicles in America, including the F series and the F-150, right? All of these different brands. And so I got curious and I started driving down other lots in different parts of the cities all around Michigan, right? I started driving about, oh, there go the troll again, Cabin Williams. Shout out to Cav. I appreciate you for trolling. But I started driving around because it was important for me to actually start paying attention and I had a light bulb moment. And I was trying to understand, okay, well, number one, how is this UAW strike actually affecting the automakers? I started doing some research and what I found is that the automakers overbuilt in order to prepare so that they'd have enough inventory to service customers and that you wouldn't have any interruption for people that was actually purchasing vehicles. So it's a ton of cars out there for y'all to be able to buy whatever it is that you want. You literally can go and get any car. There is no car that is that you cannot have from the automotive, Detroit Automotive Big Three, in order to be able to buy whatever it is that you want. There are so many cars that are available, right? That's the first thing. The second thing that I noticed is I started doing a little bit of research as far as auto delinquencies because I started seeing a whole lot, a whole lot of used cars all over these same new car lots. Now, we know that the interest rates on used cars are much higher and that dealerships make a lot more money with regard to used cars than they are to new cars. Also, when you start to compare it against, you start to compare. Now, we know Kevin ain't going to cam up because I dropped, the, I dropped the link in the chat on Friday and Wednesday of last week in order for these people to cam up. Oh, Friday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and ain't nobody camming up. They all going to say, oh, no, 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 I'm at work, I'm busy, all of this other type of stuff. Ain't none of these people camming up. Stop it. Stop it. We already had this conversation. It's not going to happen. Let's just continue to have, let's, let's continue to cook. Let's stop being distracted. So listen, the interest rates on these used cars is much greater than the, than the newer cars because the dealerships actually own the used cars and then they can set the rates for whatever it is that they want to finance it for from the financing company, right? The, the new cars are incentivized as far as what it is that they're financing them for, Right? GMAC, Ford Credit, all of these other places, right? But the used cars can be financed by anybody. The new cars can be financed by anybody too, but then they incentivize them and they, they can also, you know, they set the purchase price for what it is that they want the margins to be on, what it is that they bought it for versus what it is that they want to sell it for. And then the finance company make their money off the interest rates of whatever it is that you rock out with, right? It just is what it is. So... When we see that auto delinquencies are up across the board, but then they also say that it's rivaling that of 2008, that actually gives me more insight into what people's finances are like every single day because the affordability of these cars are out of control just, just in the same way that the affordability of homes are. Most people cannot afford the cars that they're driving, right? The true cost of that car is much higher than what it is that we're giving it credit for. So I can give you an example. When you purchase a car, most people, they take into consideration how much the purchase price of the car is going to be. Nope, they don't. They take, in, they take into consideration how much the loan is going to, be, going to be. And then they finance it for longer, right? Meaning that instead of you just getting a, a three, four, five-year loan, right? 48, 60, 36-year month, 36-month financing, because you were supposed to get something that can get you to point A to point B safely. Instead of them doing that, they spend more time and more money because they're financing it for 72 and 84, and I've even seen 96 month loans. 72, 84, 96 month loans. So they get a little bit lower of a payment, but they're gonna be paying more interest over a period of time, which the actual cost of that car is going to be significantly more than whatever the MSRP or the purchase price is of that car. Most people finance based off of the affordability, how much is my car payment going to be, not necessarily exactly how much the true cost of the car is, right? And then now that we've seen people stretch out the loan itself, but delinquencies are going up even higher, 
means that the affordability rate, yes, 96 months, go and look it up, means that the affordability rate is crazy also. Let's continue. That speaks to the impact of higher prices. The average new car price is approaching $50,000. For a lot of people, that means a monthly payment around 800 bucks. The average monthly payment is about 800 bucks. I remember when $50,000 car used to be that thing. Like you used to be able to ride that out. 50, 50 bands for a car? Oh, you was getting you something. 50 bands for a car? You was getting you something. $800 a month? That's not even the true cost of the car. That's just the car payment. That's just going over to the finance company. That ain't the cost to be able to insure it. The higher the value of the car, a lot of y'all keep saying what y'all would do if y'all got a million dollars, if you made six figures, the higher the value of the car, the higher the, insur the insurance payment is. You see what my insurance payments are? I pay $1,800 a month in insurance for all, of, all five of my cars. Total. Because the higher the value of the car, the higher insurance payment is. When you go to renew the tags every single year, it's crazy. It's crazy the amount of money that they charge you based off of the value and the weight of the car. Escalades used to 50, be $50,000. Now they starting at one thirty dollars if you get in a certain type of Escalade. $100,000 for Escalade. It used to be 50 bands. You can't get no pickup work truck and get it cheap no more. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Think about it. If the average car payment is around $800 a month, That's $9,600 a year, which is basically 10 bands a year. Now, if y'all telling me that the average black man makes somewhere between forty-seven dollars and $50,000 a year, if the average black man makes between forty-seven dollars and $50,000 a year, but he paying $10,000 a year in car payments, that ain't even including insurance, that ain't including gas, that ain't including maintenance, tires, none of that. You're telling me that the affordability rate is, cra is not crazy? And that's just for a basic car. That's for a Ford Edge, not even an Explorer, right? If the average car price is 50 bands, that should really tell you how out of whack our priorities are and how out of whack used car prices and new car prices are. A Toyota, somebody said a Toyota Tundra is $100,000. I'm about to pull this And up. with people getting squeezed by inflation in other areas of their lives, not to mention car related categories like car insurance, which is way up. Gas prices have started to tick up. This is why people are falling behind. It's tough to swing that $800 a month payment. Wow. Can I come back to housing for just a second, Ted, and ask a question? I remember a time, which shows my age, when mortgages, fixed mortgages, were often assumable uh, by, by, the, by, the next, by the person who's buying the house. Mm. Why is that no longer the case? Did the banking business just decide, hey, this is a bad deal for us, we're not going to let people assume mortgages? It's actually prohibited on conventional federally backed mortgages. It is allowed in some isolated instances with certain FHA loans and VA loans, but we're talking about a much smaller slice of the market. It would be nice though, to take over somebody's three or 4% yes. rate, because that's a key point. 80% of current homeowners have a mortgage rate below 5%. That's why people don't want to move or trade up right now because that three or four percent rate is going to become seven or eight. Well, Tyler, you should head out to. There is a company called. I want to. I want to see something really quickly. Give me a second. Let's do this. Let's build it out. Let's see what's happening out here in these streets. Vehicles. Um, where are all of the effing cars at? Well, we know this one is starting off at $130,000. The Cadillac IQ, which is the electric version of the Cadillac, is starting off at $130,000, right? An Escalade starts at $80,000 as shown, 100 bands. An Escalade starts, starts, that means that you just get the basic one, no bells, no whistles. This is the old one. This ain't even a new version of it. Starts at $80,000 a year. 
Let me build out to see how expensive I can make this Ford F-150. Oh, you can get a basic one. You can get this basic joint. <laughs> it ain't got no back seat. This mug, literally, it looked just like this. Look just like this. Don't it look like this? It looked just like on my Yeezy slide. This car, this basic at this basic A car looked just like my Yeezy slide. Facts. All right? Sorry, let me see if I can build out one of these joints. And let's see if I can get it up to 100 bands real quick. So let's go back. Um, The Raptors start at 77. The Platinum start at 73. So let's go with the, the Platinum because I know, listen, we don't do nothing but Platinum. Bling, bling. Every time you come around my city, bling, bling. 63, 64, 74. 74. So let's go with that bling, bling. Every time you come around my city, bling, bling. All right. This looks like a pretty basic truck. We want to get some colors on it. Um, Man, I don't care nothing about all of this stuff. So as of right now, if I get this car, I'm not doing all of that. Let's just go over to the payment. If I lease it today, I'm going to be paying $792 a month for a lease, for a 48-month lease. A 39-month lease is $82 with a $7,600 down payment. If I finance it with a $7,500 down payment and I finance it for 84 months, I'll be paying $1,100 a month for this truck. For the F-150 Platinum. Wow. Wow. See what Toyota is doing over here. Vehicles. Y'all said the Tundra is how much? That's a Tacoma. Tundra. Let's go with that one. Starting at 40000 Obviously, you're going to get the base model. Let's build it out. Let's do a comparative model. Capstone. All right. $78,000. View details. You get 22-inch dark rims. <whistles> wow. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Listen, man, I think that all of these prices is out of whack, honestly. You can get you a $50,000 truck over here, $45,000 truck over there. I think all of these prices is out of whack. I honestly do. I just wouldn't even be bothered. Just stay and rock out with whatever it is that you got. Don't sit here trying to keep up with the Joneses. Auto delinquencies is up. It's going to be a ton of people that get a bunch of repos and then crashed them out and did all of this. I'm not, I'm not paying $70,000 for a pickup. I don't even like pickup trucks, so it's a little different for me.